Rachel Delaste. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to our Mundo Geek. Here we're interviewing today a very special guest for our artist interview. This is our first guest as a visual with a visual artist, Esme. So please give a big round of applause for Esme. Hello. Ooh. Esme, welcome to Mundo Geek, to your channel. It's so nice to meet you. I'm excited we made this happen. Uh, we're currently in Chile, where Esme has this beautiful studio. Uh, but she's also, as we've been in the backstage, learning a little bit of citizen of the world, I would say. Yeah, yeah. Would you consider yourself that? Yes. Um, I'd say I don't really belong anywhere. I'm currently here, mm -hmm. um, but who knows where I'll be tomorrow. <laughs> um, we're from everywhere, basically. Basically, <laughs> to move around. Mm -hmm. That's what makes us who we are. Esme, I love starting up this uh, interview, always like learning more about the kid. Um, you know, what about Esmecita? You know, yeah, yeah. what about Esmecita? Where did you, where were you born? Uh, who were your parents? Like, how was your upbringing? Like, I want to learn how did art came to be in your life. Could you like bring us a little bit back to the start? Yeah, of, of course. Um, I, this is like a complex thing to explain because I had quite a, a unusual childhood and it was really, um, it was not a great childhood and it was mm -hmm. really, Uh, deeply wounding and traumatizing, <laughs> which <laughs> certifies childhood. <laughs> Let's start off with some trauma. trauma. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I do see very clearly how all those things made me who I am today. Mm. Like, um, because I felt so unloved and kind of unwanted mm. and repressed. Mm. Um, I now, as an adult, seek so much self-expression mm -hmm. and self-acceptance and self-love, mm -hmm. which I do through my art. And, um, I think that when you get your heart broken at such a young age mm -hmm. as I did, it can either harden you or it can soften you. And I feel like what it did for me is that it cracked me open and all of my feelings and all of my emotions are just constantly pouring out and I feel like that's such a key element and such an important thing if you want to do art because it's such a personal and transparent kind of experience mm. that you need to be able to pour your entire being out so even though my childhood was um difficult <laughs> you know beautifully challenging <laughs> beautifully challenging <laughs> it made me who I am today. And it, and it was, um, my parents separated when I was six, mm -hmm. like my first six years were really problematic. Um, I never had a father figure, but my, but my dad is really artistic. So I, I mm -hmm. got a lot of like my artistic side from him. Would you say it was like artistic, like genetics or like he was doing stuff around the house that you saw he was doing art? Well, he w he's a musician, mm -hmm. so he was definitely always uh, doing things that were artistic. He was always on the keyboard. He mm -hmm. was always, like, making up songs, and that was his his form of expression. That was his art. Mm -hmm. But I think it was – I think it's a genetic thing because I have it, and my brother also has it, which is, like, my dad has this art gene, which is he can pick up any instrument – and play it to perfection Where? like <laughs> right, right there on the spot yeah uh -huh. and he can draw like anything he's amazing at drawing and um it's just I feel like there's people who just have art in their blood and mm. he has that like, I feel like it came to me like he trusts his expression like he expresses yeah. you know instead of like oh am I gonna do the drawing right am I gonna do the song right am I yeah just like He trust. just, yeah, yeah, Maybe. like he just is who he is, you know, he doesn't, what's your dad's name? We can... Roberto. Roberto. Yeah. 
I like so, I like honoring your parents too because yeah, you're yeah. here because of them. Yeah, exactly. Even though I don't like I don't have a relationship with my dad. I didn't mm-hmm. ever really had one. Um, I did. I do recognize, and I I now have um, worked on myself enough to integrated <laughs> integrated and all the gifts that I got from him. I remember it. Mm-hmm. And and also the gifts I got from my mother who was this bigger, larger than life, powerful woman, you know, who just made anything and everything happen. And she could, she was a witch. Like she could materialize things. So what's your name? Constanza. Constanza. Yes. And so Constanza and Robert, those are your parents. Those are my parents. Okay. Yeah. So I want to go back to those like six years you were saying. I know there were trouble. So yeah. if you want me to stop at any point or you don't want to go further, just let me know. Mm-hmm. You're like, I don't want to go there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I'll just speak in code. Yeah. <laughs> um, I want to see like, okay, so you told me Roberto is like playing the piano around, coming mm-hmm. up with songs, drawing as he wishes, or just creating songs. Yeah. What about Constanza? What, how, how, what as a little girl? would you see that inspire you like, oh, that's art? I think, well, my mom always was a self-made woman. Like she didn't go to college. She barely made it out of like secondary school because she was such a rebel, you know, she was like, she was a major hippie. She was a revolutionary. She was like so ahead of her time. She was the first woman in Chile to ever set up a club like a, a dance club okay. where women could get in without a man. And she used to like ride motorcycles and Ooh, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh my God. She was like, she's a mood. Yeah, <laughs> she was, she passed away last mm-hmm. year. She yes. was, um, yeah, she, I'm glad we were honoring her. Right yeah. Now. yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think that she, because she didn't have like a, n- normal sort of like education, she mm-hmm. kind of had to make everything up. You know, so she just invented jobs for her artist of life. Yeah. (laughs) So good at like, Mm -hmm. oh, I need to make money. Like, how am I going to do it? Mm -hmm. Boom. She would make up like a business. And in two minutes, she would have like heaps of people involved. And she was like, she was just like, that's what I say. That's what I mean when I say that she was a witch. She would just materialize things. Like she would just have an idea and be like, boom, I'm making this happen. And I like the trust. It's like inspired action. Yeah. So we have like a vision, like we have a challenge, maybe she, she turns the challenge in like solution focus. Yeah. Okay. Solution, creative power, idea, action network, and like that energy materializing. Ooh, yeah. I love it. What would you say you would take? What do you take from seeing that? Like what's, what, what is that part? I mean, everything is part of you probably. Yeah. But what is something that you were on the sleeve of these attitudes? Um, mm. Well, I guess now that I'm like saying it out loud, I hadn't, mm-hmm. I had never really seen the connection between the two of them. Yeah. <laughs> But I see now that both my mom and my dad just went for it. You know, they never really stopped and questioned or doubted themselves or maybe they did, but they, but I never saw it. Mm -hmm. You know, they were just like, Oh, this is what I want to do. I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I, I take on a lot of that because when I started painting, which was just out of the blue, it wasn't, I'm going to ask you about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It wasn't something that I didn't study art or anything. Mm -hmm. Um, everyone was kind of like, what are you doing? Like, why are you going to do this? You're going to starve. And I was like, well, I don't care what you say. I'm going to do it anyway, you know? So doubt comes up. Yeah. And you're like... And I'm like, uh-uh. Yeah, um, yeah I, like I, I learned from a very powerful woman that I used to work for mm-hmm. that, like, you need to do shit even if you're afraid. Yeah. Like, you need to go for it. Mm. And now I see the connection between my mom and my dad. Like, sure, maybe they had self-doubt. Maybe they were... They weren't sure if they could, if they could do it, but they did it anyway. You know, like my mom went up, went ahead and created businesses and companies and nightclubs and did things, you know, mm-hmm. she did things with her life. And mm-hmm. my dad just created, he didn't like stop and think like, is this song any good? Mm-hmm. Like he just made things. And I feel like I have that. Like, I love this idea. I'm like, that's what I'm going to do. And I'm not going to listen, or maybe I will. I'll cry about it a little bit, mm-hmm. but I'll keep going. You know, mm-hmm. like I'm, I'm going to get to where I want to go. 
Yeah. I love it. I'm mm. sending gratitude to Roberto and Constanza. Mm, thank you. Um, so what I'm ga- gathering of this is like, yes, there's fear. We're human. It's part of the experience. Um, keep going from the moment. Like, don't doubt the momentum, I guess. Yeah, the yeah. energy is flowing and like flow with it. Mm. And to have that. Um, tell me, you said you didn't go to art school. Um, I, before art school, like what? Do you, how do you start getting in contact with materials or painting? Did you always knew you were going to be like focused on art? Was there like any clues of your talents or that you like this or this that this sparked joy somehow? Uh, <clears throat> now that I'm like a more advanced in my career and I look back when I was a kid, I can see the signs. Okay, like I used to. I studied fashion, yeah? Mm-hmm. So I wanted to be a fashion designer since I was six, basically. Mm-hmm. I made my first garment when I was six. I was like, <laughs> I used to play, like, fashion show and clothing store. Like, mm-hmm. those were my games when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. And I used to fill up entire notebooks of um, fashion sketching, mm-hmm. like, girls with all these outfits. And, and that was my thing, you know? Like, mm-hmm. I knew my entire life that that's what I was going to be. And there's clarity with it. Yeah. I just knew it in my heart. And then I went to school for it and I got so deeply disappointed in like the system and how it worked and, and like my teachers. Can we stop on that a little bit? Yeah. Um, Where do you go to school? Like why, how did you got disappointed? Because that tells me about you too. Like, yeah, yeah. What was expectation? What falls there? Um, I went to school here in Chile. So I went to the now Universidad del Pacifico, mm-hmm. which has disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> it disappeared. <laughs> it doesn't exist anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, and throughout my career, I knew that I was talented. Like, I know that I'm talented at that. Um, I love that belief, that strong belief. Yeah, yeah. Because, it, and even though, like, I had self-doubt sometimes, like, I knew that that was my thing, you mm-hmm. know? But then, again, you know how we were talking before, how, like, in life everyone has like a theme and my Mm -hmm. theme has been sort of like self acceptance and self love and how I've been always told that I'm like too much, too much, this, too much, Mm -hmm. whatever. Classic witch. Classic. (laughs) That's such a witch problem. (laughs) Such a witch problem. You little witch. You great witch. Yeah. You know how it goes. Um, so my teachers were always like, Oh, this is too much. Like, your designs are too much. Mm-hmm. Your expectations are too much. Like you need to tone it down. They kept telling me, yeah, you tone it down, tone Baja it down. Is an claro, mm-hmm. that's like, mm-hmm. you know, in Australia they have the things called the tall poppy syndrome, tall poppy syndrome. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So you know how in poppy fields, mm-hmm. um, they grow at different rates, mm-hmm. but the farmers cut off the poppies that grow too tall because they want all the poppies to grow at the same time <laughs> so they can harvest at the same time. So that happens in life. Like some people have tall poppy syndrome. Like they grow too much, too hard. Ahead of their time. Ahead of their time. Mm. And the farmers, the people, try to cut them off because it's like, uh uh-uh, you can't be taller than everyone else. Because you're going to give me more work. Like you're you're creating shadow for everyone else. You know, like, you know how it goes. Like when you shine too much, it just makes people aware of how they are not shining. So it's it's really uncomfortable. So they yeah. try to, it's a great medicine. I think so too. Yeah. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. um, so you were, were tell, like, telling me back in Universidad Pacifico. So you were like putting yourself out there, trusting yourself. And there were this teachers like, Oh, oh you're too, too much. much, too much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, um, I, did that took you? I remember, um, I think it was like my last, my last exam and it was like a runway and I designed this like big huge because all my designs were like huge it would like <laughs> not to, fit on the runway yeah, you know? I want to use some space yeah I was like I'm gonna take up the space <laughs> and I made this like huge dress and I loved it and I remember I was getting my model dress and I was like man I love my dress and I was saying that out loud and all my classmates were like ew 
You know, like people react so weirdly when you believe in when yourself. When you celebrate yourself. Yeah, it's like, you how dare you love yourself, you how know? How dare you be how dare enjoying you not, yourself? Yeah, how dare you not doubt what you're doing? And I was like, I would always be super... How dare you be open about it? Yeah, be like, fake it. Yeah, just fake I it. Know. Just pretend. No fuck this shit. And, <laughs> and then like Thank my teacher... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you for enjoying it. And my teacher after the runway, she was like... Oh, I got like, uh, I failed. I failed the exam. Okay. And she was like, no, you, this is not even what we asked for. So mm. you're not, you're not passing okay. the course. The, she failed me. The end, she failed, <laughs> I failed semester. the entire semester because of that runway. And I went out and I took the dress and I threw it in the dumpster. And I was like, this is it. Like, I'm done. I'm done being told that this is not it. Like I'm done being told that I'm too much. I'm done. I don't want to deal with this shit anymore. I'm like so deeply disappointed that I'm not going to do this. And I quit in that minute. I quit. And from then on, I quit what? fashion. Okay. I quit fashion. Okay. No, I did quit life. No, no, don't quit. Oh, no. Who are you? Am I talking did to not quit guess? life? <laughs> I'm mm-hmm. not going to let a few people put me down. No, no. But I did realize that that did you was really put it on the dumpster. I did put it in the dumpster. Oh, I actually. I hope someone found that gown and, and really enjoyed themselves. Wearing it nowadays. Yeah. Uh-huh. So I, I yeah, I quit fashion and I just went on a search of like, what am I going to do with my life? Mm. I, how old were you then? I think I was. Uh, how old are you when you finished school? I think I was 20, 21, 22. Mm. I was coming out of school, yeah. Well, 21, 23 age kind of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know how like everything happens in seven year cycles. Mm-hmm. So I was going through like my third year, third cycle of like everything exchanges, like every yeah, seven years. Rebirth. We yeah, can yeah. Say. Okay, interesting. So we have fashion, and then you're like, you do this ritual <laughs> of quitting, of, qui- of burning the ashes of your identity. Yeah, yeah. Like, the shit. Yeah. Um, um, what do you do with those ashes? So mm-hmm. I was feeling really lost and I didn't really know where I wanted to go or what I wanted to do. So I did what most of my classmates did back then. Um, I went and studied makeup artistry for like a little bit. Mm-hmm. I became a makeup artist. And right around that time, I have this really long story, which I'm not going to tell right now of how I met my ex-husband, but mm-hmm. I realized I hadn't seen him in a couple of years. Nothing had ever happened between us, but he was living in New York mm-hmm. and I always wanted, I had always wanted to go to New York. So mm-hmm. I was like, I'm basically like, I have nothing to do here. Here. Yeah. There's nothing that, nothing that ties me here. Exactly. And I was like, I'm just, I have no plans Mm -hmm. and I feel like I haven't gotten over this man that I randomly met three years ago. So Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to New York and look for this man and see what's (laughs) up. See what's up. And so I like like that moment of space. So death gives us, death gives us that like space, you know, that might be uncomfortable. Yeah. But it's interesting what we do with it. Like with that wide canvas, we can say. Yeah. Cause it can be really scary, you know, Mm -hmm. But I'm certain <laughs> I always hold on, try to hold on to, um, a quote that says when nothing is certain, everything is possible. So when nothing is certain, everything is possible. Yeah. Sounds like life. Uh, sounds yeah. like, right. <laughs> it sounds like life. Very mm-hmm. scary. Okay. So 21 year old Esme flies to New York. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> I, <laughs> a little like, so like, like, oh, yeah. Like, yeah. And yeah, so I so go to New York mm-hmm. and see my now ex-husband. We <laughs> fell in love immediately. And we were together for three months, which mm-hmm. was for as long as you can visit the States. Oh, correct. Uh, as a tourist, then I came back, sold all my shit, and moved to New York. And married... Wind, my ex-husband. Wind? Is it wind. Like, yeah, Winden. Winden. It's yeah. like it's like the wind, like fire wind. No, Winden. That sounds kind of like British. Um, <laughs> it's a mix between, what was the name? Linden and Wen. Mm-hmm. Their, his parents wanted to name him those two, so they combined them. I they, like that. That's a good team effort. Yeah, you know? right? Yeah. I wish there was more of that in the world. Yeah, right? <laughs> like, team effort. <laughs> 
Yes, yes. let's create something new. And if that doesn't exist yet, I love yeah. that. Okay, so you're <clears throat> in New York. Um, how does like, I mean, I have lived in New York too. So we were talking with her. She knows. <laughs> she knows how it's like. To it's live there. a lot of data. There's a lot of scene of everything. It's like, if you want to take um, Ashtanga, punk, yoga. Yeah. All of it. Before you know, um, you can do it, basically. You can find that little niche thing, which means there's a lot of information, which I think is a very good place when you're like a sponge and you're wanting to learn and like incorporate a lot of data yeah. from the outside, specifically. Yeah. Um, how does Esme, 21 year old Esme, start moving around? I want to learn also, how do you start getting into art? So I'm going to, I'm going to try to <laughs> compress this, this, size. this part because <clears throat> there's a lot of stuff that happened in between, but I think the most important bits were I lived in New York, even though I wanted to live there my entire life, it, it wasn't working for me. Oh, um, it was just too much for me, too much all at once. I, I didn't really find my place at first. Mm -hmm. And so an opportunity came up for me to move to Boulder mm -hmm. in Colorado and grow weed. Mm -hmm. So I was like, sure, I'm not doing anything. Let's do it. And mm -hmm. at the same time, I met my ex boss slash like love of love my her. life mentor. I love her mm -hmm. deeply. Mm -hmm. um, her name is Claudia Batten. Please Google her. She has this Claudia beautiful um, talk at Boulder Ignite called mm -hmm. the squiggly line. Nice. We're going to link it down below. Yeah. Yeah. She talks about like success. She's just like, she, she impacted my life in a way I could like, I don't think I could ever repay her. Like uh, she, a lot of who I am today is thanks to her. Thanks Claude. And I worked as her personal assistant when I was in Boulder. She mm -hmm. lived like two blocks away from my house. So she was in Boulder. Okay. She was in mm -hmm. Boulder. Yeah. <clears throat> and Oh, I want to do more questions. Like you're saying these stories and I, there's a few more questions. Yeah. Yeah. Finish this point. So I basically saw for the first time in my life, this powerful woman who is also really creative in a way and also really sensitive and open. Mm -hmm. And she just created an entire made up career, basically really successful um, out of just being who she was. And I was like, whoa, I was so mind love that description. Yeah. So basically people world. So it is possible to have a successful career doing the niche thing that it's authentically you. Yeah. Um, and being successful and at the same sensible and creative. Yeah. Because look, I'll give you a really simple example mm -hmm. of how I saw this because Claudia never actually sat down with me and was like, look, Esme, these are life lessons. I gathered all this from like watching her exist. Mm -hmm. So she was working with like basically all in like in a men, male dominated world, mm -hmm. which was like, what was her like area? So she was in the board of several companies. She had created mm -hmm. a couple of companies, sold them really well. Mm -hmm. um, she was very creative and she was so authentically herself. Like she, I remember she was putting together, like when I first started working for her, she was putting together a presentation mm -hmm. for like in a male dominated industry with a board of advisors, like mm -hmm. mainly men, you know, in like tech world and whatever. And she was using like Taylor Swift quotes and <laughs> wearing Louboutins, you know, and she was so fashionable and just, and she was like, and she used to be a lawyer and she left everything behind and turned into this, like herselfness. And I, was, I like yeah. that word. Herselfness. herselfness. Yeah. It's called her highness. Yeah. Yeah. Herselfness. And, and I, I, that's when I was like, okay, there is, there is a way to exist in the world. There's hope. Yeah. There is hope. <laughs> There's hope in the world. And, and then I moved and then things fell apart through and kind of fell apart in my marriage mm -hmm. and I was really heartbroken and I didn't want to come back to Chile. Mm -hmm. And can I ask you, why didn't you want, is there something that Chile doesn't have that was not supporting that Esme right there? 
oh gosh, I just, I left Chile because I was so fucking tired of being called too much and crazy. Mm, and so like, I like, just, why am I going to go back to this place? I, where I, there's a room for me. Mm, That's why I left also. I Cause I really didn't have supportive friends. I didn't have, I never had like a, a really truly supportive partner. Like I just didn't feel like I belonged here. And you've, you've traveled a lot. You know how it feels like when you land in a certain place mm -hmm. in the world and you're like, Oh my God, this is home. I feel like I should have been born here. Mm -hmm. That's how I felt when I got to New York. I was like, man, this is my place. Mm -hmm. And I loved being invisible and all of those things. Mm -hmm. So invisible. Yeah. What does that even mean? in this context that you're saying oh gosh i don't know it's like not everybody's big so i guess we're all the same like, yeah yeah no like yeah. like no one's really my, my everyone's minding their own business it's yeah. not like here in chile where like you can't like, even sh 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 yeah people oh, are yeah, like she's wearing she's dance like her <laughs> she did her boobs like yeah everyone's she's like married safe. to a french guy <laughs> exactly <laughs> i'm like what did you do this week <laughs> exactly um something i don't know if you share this feeling but something i love about new york And I call myself a New Yorker because of this. It's yeah. the culture in the city, mm. which is like diversity is king. Yeah. You can be rigid Wall Street guy. You can be flamboyant, whoever the fuck you want to be. And everything is celebrated. Yeah. Every, everyone is respected and everyone is part of the city. It's everyone is part of the colors, the sounds, the smells. The smells. <laughs> the smells. Oh, oh my God. The smells, but yeah, that's that. And besides, if that's New York or not like attached to the land itself, but for me, that is my culture as a person. Like, yeah. diver I love diversity. Like, yeah. I love your color. You can be this, you can be that, you can be here, here, that doesn't matter. I feel like mm -hmm. that's a really beautiful way to describe New York and mm -hmm. what makes it so unique. Mm -hmm. And I think that maybe that's why you love it and why I love it because. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's what I mean when I say you're invisible in New York. It's just because you're everyone, separate. you're integrated, you're integrated into the whole, you know, you're not like, you're not the tall poppy. The tall poppy. Yeah. Tall you're poppies just, are welcome. Here. Everyone's a tall poppy, mm -hmm. you know, like it's a, it's mm -hmm. a big, humongous, beautiful, colorful, musical mess, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think you can, you can be whoever you want to be in New York. Like, you know, yes. You can be any, any and every version of yourself mm. and you will find a place for you. Yes. You know, you're celebrated for that. Yeah. I love it. That's oh, why you're amazing. You'll find friends that mm. are aligned with that. You'll find like jobs. It's just, everything's available in New York all mm -hmm. the time. Um, I love this because we're talking wonders about New York. Mm. I want to talk about the shadow aspect of New York too. And oh you said before, like, And I, that's when I was like, I want to ask some questions there about like, okay, New York is amazing. Culture is amazing. There's a lot of job offers, people from everywhere. <clears throat> Tell me a little bit about U.S. Megumo. In what moment New York needs to be cut off from your story? I think it was the moment I realized that I am very sensitive It was the moment where I started to accept that I am a sensitive person. How would that express, for example? Um, I take on a lot of energy mm. from spaces, from people, from mm. myself. Like, you know how I said that when I was a kid, I got my heart broken. So that cracked me open. Mm -hmm. That means that that openness goes both ways, it goes out, but it also goes in. And mm. I didn't. I, I, it's like having superpowers, like moving things with your mind and you haven't yet figured out how to manage those superpowers. So you're just breaking shit everywhere. Yeah. So it was like that. Like I have this superpower of being super sensitive. Yeah. This resonates a lot. Yes. I'm like very sensitive now because I'm like, there's more people in the world. Yeah. That's what we're doing. There's more of us. There you is know? more of us. Yeah. So you're this very mm, sensitive person. I'm going to say yeah. in New York. And what do you do to administrate that? Or what did you learn about it? If we could take some like tools or lessons from that. I think, I think at first I thought that I could survive by just becoming super guarded. But at some point I realized that that's just not who I am. Is that like survival mode kind of? Yeah. Like on flight or fights? Yeah. 
Like you have to be super tough. Like you, mm. you go out on the street and you put on this armor and you're this like tough person. I gained 10 like kilos when I got to New York from, I got yeah. acne kilos. Like my feminine was like hidden basically. It, you, you have to protect very yeah. young. Yeah. It's, it just, it requires you to be a version of yourself. Mm. And I feel like for me personally, mm. and I'm guessing for you as mm. well, it wasn't, um, the environment wasn't allowing for all of myself to come out. You know, mm -hmm. I hadn't yet found a space where I could just allow my feminine side to come out because I had to be really masculine in New York. Yes. This resonates a lot. Like the yeah. young energy. It's, it's a very young city. It is. It yeah. is. Mm -hmm. And I just, I got tired. I, I was, I was physically so tired. Yeah. I was like, maybe I don't want to feel like this all the time. You know, <laughs> maybe I need to rest. Maybe I want to be, feel alive. <laughs> yeah. you know, like, yeah, it's crazy. Cause I hadn't yet met the other part of me that I met later on, mm -hmm. but I knew somewhere inside of me, something wasn't complete or right mm -hmm. or, you know, and I needed to change the environment. It became really obvious. At and, one point. And then basically that it's what brought you to Boulder. Boulder. Yeah. So the, the tool would be like create distance from that environment. In that yes. Moment. I think that, I think there's a lot of like in today's culture, mm -hmm. there's a lot of um, people talking about like how you need to like work on yourself and love yourself and accept yourself. Mm -hmm. But it leaves out a huge, like, okay, yes. You do need to have self-responsibility. You do need to look at yourself and work on yourself and whatnot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there's also like cultural aspects. There's so there's social aspects. There's environmental aspects. You do <laughs> Ancestor need things. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you do need to consider like mm -hmm. if you are in the correct environment mm -hmm. with the right people, mm -hmm. you know, with the right conversations, being fed by the right things, mm -hmm. the best parts of you will come out and you will be able to learn How about do we yourself. Know? How do we know, Esme, that these are the right conversations, the right environment? What would you say about Like, it? are you uncomfortable? In a are, positive way, you mean? No, like, like ch check in with your body. Mm -hmm. Like, are you uncomfortable in some place? Like, when you're sitting down and having a conversation with someone, mm. are you tense? Are you uncomfortable? Are you fidgeting? Are you wanting to leave? If you're in an environment where you're constantly kind of like, you know, check in with your body, like your body will let you know. Yes, I will, uh, you know, check in with your body, your like, body will let you. Are you gaining weight? Are you, do you have acne? Mm -hmm. Are you on, are, do you look sick? I do. Are you <laughs> unhappy? Are you, you know? puking on the supermarket? <laughs> are you fainting on the streets? You know, are you like having a panic attack? <laughs> I used to have panic attacks in New York all the time. And mm -hmm. I just, Assumed they were normal. Yeah, I, I went know. through two freaking deep depressions. Like, In New York? I to, yeah, wanting to take my life. Yeah, so, <laughs> you know, like... Regular New York stuff. When you're, when you're having all those things, I, you know what, I actually had a really beautiful moment. Like, I feel like in my life, because I've struggled so much with my mental health mm -hmm. and self-awareness of, like, when things are really critical, I've struggled to remove myself from bad situations. Okay. I feel like my angels have magically intervened and I had a moment in New York when I was sitting in my bed and I was just mm -hmm. sobbing, completely destroyed emotionally. And all of a sudden everything became quiet. And I said this out loud, but it wasn't me speaking. Mm -hmm. And I said, what are you doing, Esme? What are you doing? Mm -hmm. You need to leave. And it was a, you need to leave, you need to leave this relationship, you need to leave this place, you need to leave this life that you've built for yourself, Enough. you know? Enough. Enough. But it was me saying it out loud, but I promise you it wasn't me. It was, and everything, you know the how- The angels it, use your vocal cords. Yeah, 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 they came through <laughs> they me. They were like, she's not getting the panic attacks. She's, yeah. not, she's not getting the rushes. We're gonna go straight to the vocal cords. There's a saying that says like, <laughs> the universe will speak in whispers. If you don't listen to the whispers, it'll throw pebbles if you don't pay attention to the pebbles, it's going to knock down the whole fucking wall. Yeah. So like, mm. if you don't get the subtle signs, it'll come a point where everything's going to fall apart. Mm. And we usually learn and we get the message at that point. Um, <laughs> but it's part of life, you know, like, we usually, we usually, no, we're out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we usually game. get knocked in the head, you know? Mm. Um, 
but yeah. And so circling back to the other thing, again, I was in this, I was in this place where I was like heartbroken, marriage fell apart, needed to leave um, that marriage and that place that we had mm -hmm. physically, like the apartment yes. we had. And I was like, okay, if I leave this home that I've built for myself here, mm -hmm. I have nothing. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not going to go back to Chile. I have nowhere to go. If I leave this situation, I have nowhere to go. Like, I'm deeply heartbroken. Where can I go? And I remember calling my mom and telling her, like, mom, my marriage just fell through. Like, I don't know what I'm going to do. And she, was like, she was in Chile. Mm -hmm. And she was like, baby, I'm going to, I'm going to get you an airplane ticket mm -hmm. for you to go visit your sisters in Australia. Mm -hmm. And, I'll say, and she was like, if you're going to be heartbroken, you better be heartbroken in paradise. Yeah, and I, was like, I love that line. Man, my if mom you're going to be heartbroken, you better be broken in, heartbroken. heartbroken in paradise. Yeah. My mom was like, <laughs> that. she was like, oh, she's such goddess. So smart. Such a goddess. <laughs> she's so sensitive, like so mm -hmm. smart. And did you take the ticket? I did. I took the ticket and I was like, thank you very much. I just sold all the crops of weed. So I had all these, all the money. So you, you basically remove yourself from the New York situation and you took yourself to Boulder. That was like the little healing place, the cocoon, yeah. I would say. And from there you took the ticket to Australia. To Australia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Australia. Australia. Uh -huh. What happened? So, then? so I landed in Australia and for the first two years, I was a total backpacker. Like I was cleaning um toilets for a living which is beautiful in australia do not get me wrong like you get paid like working so well. holiday yeah is it, is it was that the the thing yeah yeah it was two the years thing? yeah two years in the uh, working holiday visa and Ooh. i was like scrubbing toilets having the best time in my life because oh i only worked four hours every day had enough money to live like australia pays really well for that kind of stuff because they gotta go surf That's what I've heard. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I did surf. I tried a couple times. But I mean, but it's, I, I mean, like you have, you want the extra time of the day to live. Yeah. Uh -huh. So all of a sudden, and you know, what's crazy about Australia? I mean, not Australia in general, but about Byron Bay, which is exactly where I was, mm -hmm. is that Byron has a deeply, deeply feminine energy. Mm. I have never been in a, in a place in the world that had feminine energy. That and Bali are the two places that I've experienced. What about this Bali and this place that shines? What makes it like feminine, feminine? for you? It's safe. It's, <laughs> it's safe. Like for the first time in my life, I felt safe mm. to be a woman, which is crazy. Like I don't even know how to describe it. Because I had never, I didn't realize that I never felt safe to be a woman until I landed in Byron and I was able to be feminine and feel safe around other men in public. Like, and I had Can maybe more detail about yeah, it. Like yeah. when you mean to be feminine in front of other men, does that mean the way you move, the way you talk, the, the dress, like how did you start it? Like bringing forward more of your feminine self? How did it came to be, you know, was it through your voice? where you were like were you wearing different clothes I mean it started off with like uh, uh, with wearing less clothes because it's really hot yeah, there yeah, yeah. yeah we're naked and, yeah we're naked mm -hmm. and girls go topless on the beach mm -hmm. but here too, <laughs> like you. you can't really you can't really do that here mm, no. and like people would just walk by you and they don't give a shit like it's, it's not, not a boobs. thing yeah. they're just tits you yeah. know <laughs> and <laughs> And like, there's so much like walking around barefoot and being naked that mm. you inevitably get back in contact with your body, you know, with nature, you know, with the nature Grounding stuff. Yeah. There's so much like, and there's so many like healing opportunities. Like I did heaps of women's circle and I connected with other women and I saw other ways of being a woman that weren't like guarded and tough, you know, and I'm like, shit, I can actually, Not the New York successful kind of lady or the Chilean women who are, mm. so, I'm, I'm, this is a gross, uh, generalization, mm -hmm. but I feel yes. they're really disconnected with their, uh, true feminine, with they, their, with their vagina, with, with their, their vagina, vagina. they don't yeah. have vulva their vaginal power, or, you know, yes. like they're, they're cervical, <laughs> there's a lot of like mm. mental ways of being a woman here, mm. which you have to be pure and you have to be, you know, <laughs> there's just all these expectations of what a woman should be like mm. and real womanhood, which is 
messy and expansive and magical and a little crazy and a little irrational Emotional, yeah. and heaps of emotion. Mm. All that is deemed crazy. Too so, much. Too much. Too powerful. Yeah. Uh, so I love this. I met so many like witches in Byron. The and, witches of Byron Bay. Yeah. New and, TV show on Netflix. I want to watch it. I want to watch it. I want to be in it. Oh, yeah. Can I be your guest in that show? <laughs> oh, my God. So, yeah. He's so, of- so uh, I, I'm gathering. I love taking the stories. I love taking the medicine so we can, like, highlight those things so we can integrate them also yeah. as tools. Practical. Tools. I like yeah. practical. I like it. So nakedness, sun on your skin. Feet on the ground. Um, yeah, a lot of connection with the ocean as well because mm. it um, it's super hot there. And I would get up at like five in the morning every day because it's common practice. People go to bed really early. They get up, they go they go to bed early. They get up really early. The you go to club. <laughs> yeah, you go to five a.m. at the beach, and there's people surfing, having their coffee, everything you do at the beach. Mm. So I would get in the ocean every single morning before I went to work, went like threw on my work clothes before this was popular, uh, Wim Hof technique. Oh. Exactly. So that's what I say. Like when you're in the right environment, surrounded by the right people, you get to really see the best parts of you. Mm. And I was taught by, I can't remember who, but I think it was a woman that when you have something inside of you, give it to the ocean So literally plant yourself in the sand, either it is your hands or your feet Mm -hmm. and whatever you want to give away, give it to the ocean, say, ocean, I give this away to you. Take it, please. In this case, for example, your experience with, um, ex-husband. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. I was really heartbroken and I would go to the beach and swim in the ocean and just say like, please take this sorrow away. Please take this sorrow away. Mm -hmm. And I also was doing a lot of yoga with my younger sister, who is a brilliant yoga teacher because her yoga classes aren't just like move your body. So you get fit. It was like, what are your intentions? What do you want to heal? Like what parts of your body need more love and tender Mm. attention, you Mm. know? So I was becoming so aware everywhere of myself, my body, how I fit into this body, (laughs) what this body is doing for me. What, and I, for the first time ever, I occupied my body, which is Mm really strange, but I really was occupying every inch of my body. I was fully present. And for the first time ever, I would like go to the beach and look up to the sky and be like, thank you. You know, thank you for this life. Thank you for being who I am, for being born into this person, you know, thank you for this avatar. Thank you for being Esme. Mm. Thank you for my soul. Thank you for my experiences. Thank you for this. I was just so grateful to be alive for the first time ever. because I never before in my life ever really deeply wanted to be alive. You know, mm. I always wanted to sort of escape mm. and, and it was in that, um, perfect, profound encounter with myself that I discovered art and it was <laughs> by chance completely by chance. Mm-hmm. It was never really in my radar. Yeah. <laughs> like it was never in my radar to become an artist. It wasn't like I, it wasn't like I looked at artists and I was like, Oh, that would be so cool. No, never, mm-hmm. never thought I'd be I drawing anything. Mm-hmm. No, wasn't my, nope. um, I was working with my brother-in-law who is an artist. His name is James McMillan. James McMillan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's a brilliant artist. Is he a visual artist too? Yeah, he paints. Mm -hmm. Um, And I was working with him, organizing a surf festival that he puts on in Byron Bay. And I was sketching something to show him something that we were doing. And I was making a sketch and he was like, oh man, I reckon you could paint. And I was like, me? He was like, yeah, yeah, you'd be really good. And I was like, oh, just, shut up, James. Shut up, James. James. Shut up. Shut up, oh, James. What you talking about? <laughs> this is one of the lines of which is a buyer of Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then one day he calls me and he was like, oh, I got you this wall. You're painting a mural. Mm. And I told the owners that we're going to do a collaboration, but I'm actually not going to paint. You're going to paint it. Damn, James. And I was like, damn. So he was the first person to ever believe in me and push me. 
and like I, I <laughs> am. You, James. No, I'm. I'm literally. I am on this path thanks to him because it had never crossed my mind. So he pushed you to his experience. Yeah, there you are. There I am, and I'm like, okay. But you uh, said yes to to the opportunity. Yeah, I said You're like, yes. oh my god, no, I don't think <laughs> I'm not trying. You were like, fuck yeah. Oh yeah, I was like, let's let's do it. And I did. I'd never painted a mural, so I was like, I'm gonna paint a practice mural first. Mm -hmm. And I went to Glenn Casey, who was then the manager of the Patagonia store in Byron Bay. And they were doing a construction on the outside. And I was like, Glenn, can I paint a tiny mural next to the door? Because blah, blah, blah. And he was like, yeah, sure. Let's make go crazy. Okay. So I, for three days, I painted this tiny mural with the size mm -hmm. of the size of those two doors. Mm -hmm. And I had such a good Like people would stop on the street and be like, oh, this is so cool. And I would like meet people. So cool. So cool. Oh, <laughs> and then I, and then I painted this other big mural and I fell in love with it. And I painted that uh, practice mural and then I painted. What did you do? I painted <laughs> a um, dinosaur destroying a city. Okay. Kind of like the King Kong, no, the King Kong art you've done. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. And it said society destroyer on the top. Uh -huh. And I don't know why I designed it that way, but it's been kind of my style throughout my career. Like that's very much like vintage poster mm -hmm. with a lot of letters included. And then I painted the other mural. And when I finished that big mural, it was a big wall. What I was are you like, doing that one? Uh -huh. What are you doing that one? I did um, a universe with like a flying cow and it said Cosmonauts. Cosmonauts. Yeah, in like big letters, and and that day I was like, damn, this is this is it. Like this is my thing. I have found my thing, and like I think it was three days later or four days later, someone walked by that mural, saw my signature, mm -hmm. contacted me, and they were like, can you come and paint a mural in my cafe? Did you put? This is very good information. Did you just like put your like ad? Instagram yeah. kind of tag? I, I put my at Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, and is, Esme Ferretti. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, I got called to do another mural. And then after that, another mural. And boom, it just took off. Just like that. I, it, like, I it wasn't... Story, yes, man. And this is what I always... I know, like... I hate it when I tell the story and people are like, yeah, that's an anomaly. And I'm like, no, bitch. It doesn't have to be an anomaly. It's just that this idea that things are so hard all the time, I find that it's just like, okay, things can be hard, but they can also be really easy. Yeah. Like, you can also stumble upon exactly what you need to be doing in this lifetime. Mm -hmm. And when you, once you do, the doors just fly open like they did for me because I found my thing. And... It was huge Just confirmation. Like you got in like your timeline, like uh, instead of trying to go through other timelines, you're like, oh, yeah, that's my timeline. I feel like it was like I met my destiny. Yeah. So it was like <laughs> music sounds in the background. Yeah. <laughs> huge violins, like, and yeah, it was like I took off from then, and, and then was, here you're in Byron Bay doing like this mm -hmm. murals in the Byron Bay Byron Bay scene. Yeah, I was doing murals and I was doing signs as well and I was doing just whatever. So you were doing this um, murals and this, you said signs too? Yeah, I was doing like signs for cafes and stuff like that. I was doing a little bit of graphic design, which is something I also like taught myself how to do. I was doing a little bit of everything, but mainly I was doing art. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I had so much clarity that that's it like this is what I want to do with my life like I I love that this found happens it. I love how, like the process of this like chaos lots of data information then I'm like okay this is like violent let me go take like some space for myself let me fly to another place let me get grounded on the ocean on yeah. the earth so, like and then I find this but you don't find it from chaos you find it from like being so connected to yourself. I feel like this is something really important that you're mm -hmm. noting right now because if this had happened at any other point in my life when I was in chaos, mm -hmm. I might have thought about it too much and I might have not been able to 
understand what was happening. Mm -hmm. It's just like, you know, when you're in your best moment with yourself, like we were talking before, when you're mm. connected fully in your self, you're you, <laughs> yeah, you tend to either find your soulmate or you mm. find, you know, I feel like when you're in your best energy, you inevitably align with your highest timeline, which for me was mm. art, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that it's a really big lesson for life. Like when when you're you're most connected amazing things will unfold like will come for when you when you're most connected amazing things will flow it's my what is water some things or a thing that really gets you connected to yourself it can be yeah. then and nowadays the ocean mm -hmm. i think that the ocean um singing which is like not my thing at all. Like I'm not a good singer. No, stop right there. I'm a, I'm a shower I'm a performance singer. coach. <laughs> like if you talk, if you breathe, you sing. Yeah. Uh, well, I know that if you practice, you can get there, but I'm like a shower singer. I'm a closet mm -hmm. singer, but it's like I'm a closet painter. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll have a closet personality, mm -hmm. but singing like, so ocean singing, singing, painting like really just doing craft, what i do every day my craft mm -hmm. uh really gets me connected i'm not like a meditation person mm -hmm. or like i'm i'm not a, a yoga person or i don't like have a super healthy diet like i drink i i, <laughs> I get fucked up yeah i get fucked up sometimes <laughs> but i feel like just yeah doing finding little spaces where i can fully be myself kind of like recharge that battery and allow me to be more connected to myself it's it kind of seems like it self charges like the mm. more i am myself the more myself i am therefore the more i connect there you know it's like you're like in this momentum so yeah. there's no energy drainage yeah so it. for example singing mm -hmm. it's such a visceral thing for me because i'm so emotional that I get super connected to my emotions through music. Like I would listen to a song that mm -hmm. really just makes me feel. And I allow myself, like if it want, if I want to cry, I'll cry and I'll sing to the top of my lungs and I'll cry it out. And, I, and it, I'm not crying about anything. I'm just really moved by the music. Like literally that's it. Mm -hmm. And same thing with art or paintings or I don't know, sculpture or whatever form of art or like dancing. It's just, self-expression moves me so that really helps me so connect it needs to be moved i feel it needs to be moved wait yeah. move it you both wait. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and a lot of like your i think mm -hmm. that emotions um aren't only meant to be felt or thought mm -hmm. they need to be literally moved through the body mm -hmm. so if, whether if it's dancing or swimming or running or yogaing or mm -hmm. boxing whatever you need to move your emotions through your body like there's a lot of somatic exercises also yes. you can do mm -hmm. um like tremoring yeah and, and just stomping mm -hmm. or moving your hips around or fuck the pillow or, fuck the pillow <laughs> or have sex you know have sex yeah, that sex was also that was so awesome yeah <laughs> I mean, if it's good, it's going to move a lot of shit, but yeah, because yeah, um, we're also receiving. Yeah, emotions. you're giving and you're receiving. So it's like a big exchange of energy, mm. but it, it moves stuff around. It's like, it's like putting your hand in a river mm. or a pond and just shaking. So the all the stuff is going to come up, you know, like and you're going to find the little shiny pebbles. Too. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to be able to see the pebbles of gold mm. and, um, and the dirt and that's life. We yeah. get the good and the bad all together, and that's what's beautiful. So about many it. times I've had like beautiful intense sex, and I'm like, oh, like yeah. you're, you're like you're you're crying with your orgasm, and my amazing point is like, oh, okay, but it's just it's pleasurable. It's pleasurable to grab this energy that maybe was like in a little dark corner, mm -hmm. and you, I think for me and like a tool, I would say to move through that emotion. And we were talking with a friend about this mm -hmm. to breathe into it exactly to lean into it it's like oh that's uncomfortable oh, let me go check it out a little bit more yeah breathe it out a little bit more and like explore it and just like sing out of your lungs you know and like express it 
present. Yeah, I've realized mm-hmm. lately that it takes a lot more energy to repress an emotion than it does to just allow it to <laughs> come you, out. Can you do a painting with that? Yeah. <laughs> like it, I like didn't, a sign, like I a warning sign. I had this conversation mm-hmm. with my sister and I did an exercise about it. Mm-hmm. And it literally, it doesn't take more than two minutes to sit with an emotion mm-hmm. and let it come through your body. But it can take years of you repressing that emotion. It comes up. No, no, no. Don't want to look at it. Don't want to look at it. It can Mm. take years. Mm. It doesn't take more than two minutes. And it feels literally like this. You feel like the ground shaking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you feel it coming up. It feels really uncomfortable. It Mm -hmm. starts rising, rising, rising. And it peaks. Mm -hmm. And when it's at its peak, it's really fucking uncomfortable. Like in your body, in your mind, in your feelings. Mm -hmm. It's so uncomfortable. But it peaks for like 30 seconds and then it starts dropping. And you're like, was that bad? <laughs> yeah. And then it starts dropping. Mm-hmm. And what comes after is like what comes after giving birth. It's like mm-hmm. oh, such a relief. And and it's gone. Like it's literally gone. It doesn't come back. It might come back like later on. Yeah, you need to look at it again. Mm-hmm. But you can spend years of your life repressing an emotion. And if you let it just come through, find something that feels safe for you. Mm-hmm. For me, for example, art is a safe container mm-hmm. for my emotions. I'm not being judged. I'm not being told I'm too much. I need to be too much. You know, um, mm-hmm. no one's looking at me. I have my personal private space mm-hmm. where I can dance and cry and scream or do whatever it is that I need physically to get the emotion out, but find something that feels safe, like a safe container. Mm-hmm. If, if it is sex with your loving, honoring partner, mm-hmm. of course, you know, cause sex can be really healing. That's why yes. sometimes we cry after it. Um, whatever it is for you that feels safe, find a safe, safe container and let it out because emotions come in and come out. You know how children don't repress anything like that hit themselves and they'll cry. Yeah. They're upset and they show they're upset. Mm. They're happy and they laugh. They, they want a cookie and they want a cookie. Yeah. And you don't have, yeah, they're frustrated. About Cause it. emotions are constantly being generated. Mm. So they constantly need to be let through and out. Mm. They, they don't like stop ever generating and they don't ever stop wanting to come out. We need to learn to navigate that natural cycle of emotion comes up. We feel it. We let it out. Mm. So, we as grown-ups need to become more like children in that I sense. I guess the fear there as a grown-up might be, and everyone can voice it this in their own way. It's just like, I'm scared of being inappropriate. Mm. I'm scared of being isolated, alienated, mm. because I am authentic. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I don't know if authentic would be the word there, but I am too much, too emotional, myself, basically, to be myself. Yeah. So... Is it fear or is it love? You know, is, am I shutting this because of fear or am I shutting this because of love? That's interesting. I think there's a lot of fear. There is. I there's see just so much judgment. Our parents' generation, <clears throat> maybe it's from the people around who I grew up with, but there's some people because it's not everyone. It's a generalization. It's rigidity. This shutting down that you were saying. Yeah. I love this. This meme breathing in through it um i want to take us a little bit into you mentioned birth mm. uh, uh we were in bay, Byron bay um we 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 got a little bit of how you started i would love to learn what you learn about the industry for people who are starting up like for example you were maybe you were not thinking about money when you were doing those things in Byron bay mm. maybe you were just flowing or were you like maybe mentored by Jay uh James. James, was he telling you like, oh, a mural of this size should cost this? Or how? I want to learn a little bit about your insight in industry. I know some big lessons or just lessons that you find valuable. I love this. <laughs> this is like my thing, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> this is my thing. Welcome to so, the Yeah, I really, I love sharing all this content Mm -hmm. and this information on Instagram because, because my way of um, navigating through the art industry has been so um, different as other people put it like, oh, such an anomaly or whatever, like for you, it was easy. It hasn't always been easy. It just started off really easily. Mm -hmm. Um, But I've also been able 
to see from, from a distance, other people's like mental limitations with it. I love it. So I really love to share what I've learned, Mm -hmm. like how I see it working from the inside out, how I've managed to figure out things like pricing, um, practical things, what you should charge for and whatnot, you know, where you think are the main mental limitations, um, you call it like plastic art as a painter. How do you describe like the general of art you do? I'd say painting. Mm-hmm. So what are the major mental limitations that a painter faces? You, mm-hmm, you see oh, gosh. that if you paint, you're going to start. Okay. That's if you paint, one. you're going to start. Yeah. Not that enough. there's not enough room for everybody. There's not enough. Like there's too much. Basically. Yeah. There's, there's too much competition mm-hmm. that you have to be a certain type of painter to make it okay you know like you have to have a to certain... be commercially successful yeah. you gotta do x yeah exactly mm-hmm. and i would say it's all bullshit like bullshit bullshit bullshit, bullshit. <laughs> yeah that's bullshit <laughs> you get flame. a car and you get a car you know how oprah goes like you get you get bullshit you get bullshit. <laughs> so basically mm-hmm. if i could boil it down to one thing it would be you need to have no doubts whatsoever about yourself. You're going to have them, but you need to keep fucking going. They're going to come. They're They're going to be like, hey, what's up? And you're going to be? Fuck you. And keep going. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) And like I heard this guy say the other day on Instagram, he was like, you need to have no plan B. Mm -hmm. And I agree with that. Like you can't be like, oh, I want to be an artist, but then I'm also going to study like, um, I don't know, to be an accountant just in case art fails. No. Yeah. This no, resonates you... deeply too for me, especially when you have a lot of talents too. Exactly. <laughs> you know what the thing is? Uh-huh. There's heaps of people with talent. There's talent everywhere. And there's people way less talented than you making it yeah. big. Because and they focus in the one thing. Because they're doing the work, you mm-hmm. know? And like, they, like, they say that people that aren't like that, it's usually the people that aren't that smart or aren't that talented that are actually like out there making it because they're so delusional about like, mm. you know, you got to be deluded. And they feel they're maybe weaker in that, in the talent space. So they over, not over, but they, they do the work basically. Yeah. They focus on doing the work instead of uh, thinking or focusing on how they could doubt themselves. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you gotta, you know, you gotta be delulu. You gotta think like, oh man, I I'm, like I'm, your answer. I'm gonna, ah, I'm gonna ah, make a bit. You know, you gotta really be like, oh man, I'm, I'm gonna succeed at this shit. Mm-hmm. A little bit of how I was in school, like, oh my, my shit's the best. You know, like I don't know if you read my Instagram bio, but it says self love activist. Cause that's I what's up. Fucking love when people root from themselves, root themselves, enjoy themselves. People, they, and some people call it like, oh, I mean, you're not a humble person. And I'm, I love it. Yeah, it's like such a compliment. I'm like, thank you, bitch. Thank you. I'm shining my light, babe. Yeah. I'm like, and when somebody does that, I'm like, fucking, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I think it's just, it's that. You got to be delusional. You got to believe in okay. yourself. Yeah. Okay, it's interesting. How do I stay delusional? So in terms of like everything it's going to open for me Mm -hmm. and work in the current scene. Like how do those work together? Being delusional in the current scene. Yeah. And like working with what, whatever scene am I in? For example, you're in Bay or May, or maybe you're here. Like I want to learn a little bit. How does this artist, like I see the belief where we were talking about, like as a vibration, as a state of mind, how does that, go into the scene how do you translate it into like practical terms yes practical momentum forward you said you gotta do this one thing too yeah how does how does that look uh okay so when you are super clear about what you want to do which is mm-hmm. let's say one day i woke up and i'm like i want to be an artist yeah mm-hmm. when you have a goal in mind you're like this Nothing distracts you from your goal. That's you're important. having a conversation with someone and they say something that triggers a thought that you're like, oh, I'm going to talk about this other thing because this might open an opportunity. You start seeing opportunities everywhere. Yeah. Mm. So your brain starts to function in a different way. Like I used to, I was so focused on, I'm going to make a career out of this 
that I would like meet a friend for coffee at a coffee shop, see a blank wall and be like, can I talk to the owner and mm. go up to the owner and be like, do you have a plan for that wall? Cause I'm an artist. Here's my Instagram. Like, do you want me to paint something for you? I'll do it at a discounted rate. When I first started, I would mm-hmm. like offer a lot of discounted murals because okay. I really want to get a lot of practice. In. I like this because, because you're saying this is my price, but I want to do this work. So I give you this like little finance benefit because I want to do this exactly. incentive. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And also I started, like, I had such a delusional belief in myself. Like I wasn't even that good back then, but I was like so confident that I was like, yeah, these are my prices. And they were high. Were they uncomfortable in the beginning when you would say those prices? No, that's what's crazy. Now that I'm like way better than Mm -hmm. I was back then, I feel more uncomfortable charging now than I did back then when I was like completely delusional. What do you think is that? Why are Uh, we like so comfortable at a point and then we're like weird about it? Because I was like a child back then. Mm. I was like a kid. Mm. I didn't, like I hadn't grown up to listen to all the um, opinions of others, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think it has a lot to do with like coming back to Chile and Mm. seeing a lot of limitations in this country because Mm. I landed here. And the first thing I heard was like, you're, you, you need to make room for yourself. No one knows you here. You're going to have to work your way up. Like I heard all these limiting speeches and I Mm. bought into them like quite, yeah, I did. And (laughs) it's been like, it's part of the process. Yeah. It's part Mm -hmm. of the process. Like that's just life. You lose yourself. You find yourself again and then you lose yourself again. And and that's a cycle. That's just how we grow. What have you learned about the scene here in Chile? Like, mm, like how do you professionally present yourself as an artist? Um, For example, you said, I go to a coffee shop. We go to a coffee shop. You see this mural. You do the network. You contact the owner. Hey, I do murals. You need a mural mm. here. Um, if you're interested, I'm interested too. There's um, discounted a discount for you if we want to collaborate. Maybe now it's not that way. Mm. Um, how do you keep going? How do you... I want to know practical stuff. Like I send them an email with a budget, a previews. How does that work? Mm. So... First, you got to do the networking bit. Mm -hmm. Um, Always make sure that it's a win-win situation. Energetically, it Mm. has to be, they have to win and you have to win. If there's any imbalance in that exchange, what do we do? It's going to fall through. What do we do if there's an imbalance? I'm your client, you're the artist, we feel it. What do we do? If you feel Mm -hmm. like they are wanting to get more out of what you're offering, like for the money that they're paying or whatever... Mm -hmm. You're going to feel it. You're going to feel it in your stomach. You're going to feel really uncomfortable. Then you need to negotiate. And for that, you need to believe in yourself. You have to be like, well, just be polite, you know, be nice, mm-hmm. be, be honest. Don't, don't be honest as in say like, oh, stop being such a greedy bitch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> don't say that. Give the money. Yeah. But, um, try to be as nice and polite and curious mm-hmm. for them like and what they're word. trying to get to, mm-hmm. um, and really try to get, Um, a balance between what you're willing to do for what the money that they're offering. So for example, you say, I charge 10 and they're Mm -hmm. like, well, for 10, we want you to do all of this, but you Mm -hmm. know that that's not worth 10. So then uh, feels uncomfortable. Yeah. So So you're going to go, this doesn't feel right. I, yeah. So you're going to go, well, what you're, uh, what you're offering, Mm -hmm. what you want actually costs 20, but for 10, we could do this Mm -hmm. and you, uh, present options. Mm -hmm. Always make sure that you come up with a solution Mm -hmm. before you like push back. Don't push back because it usually just takes a little bit of curiosity and a little bit of investigation Mm -hmm. in the conversation to get to a point where they're going to be happy and you're going to be happy. Mm -hmm. So if you approach the negotiation with curiosity, instead of being immediately offended, like this is not compatible. Yeah, Mm -hmm. exactly. Just curiosity, you know, like, Oh, I can offer you this, always offer a solution, always try to get to an agreement that you feel good about and that you know that they're, that they're getting to where you like the little emphasis right here. Cause it feels, you're going to feel it in your body. You're mm-hmm. going to feel it in your gut. And then you send them like a quote with as much detail as you can. Like these are, this is how much the supplies cost. <clears throat> this is how long it's going to take for me to design, correct and execute. So you send them a quote, mm-hmm. um, like a little schedule, like yeah, timeline at least couple um don't ever send sketches before they pay 50 percent in advance mm-hmm. so i always charge 50 percent in advance the other 50 percent once i'm done with them so meal. when they agree the quote 
they're like, okay, we're going to get into this. That's when they would commit by sending the 50% exactly. and you start working, really investing in the project. Exactly. And that's when you send sketches and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes, and this is really important, sometimes um, they are quoting with different artists. So mm -hmm. what I always recommend oh. is that you have a price per um, creative uh, proposal. So I charge X amount to create uh, sketches and a proposal mm -hmm. and I send that through and if, and they have to pay for that in full. I like this. Okay. So that's a portion of the total. So and you're not ready to commit <clears throat> to the full mural uh, you commit to the sketches at least. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, and if they like, because if they're quoting with different artists, um, they might want to see proposals, right? right yeah. So they're going to pay for my proposal because that is still work and that is creative work. That is time, that is research, that is meetings, creative. that is emails, that is corrections. Mm -hmm. You know, like you send them something they're like, Oh, can we move this around? Mm -hmm. All that is work that needs to be paid for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yes. I charge for that in full. And if they want to move forward with a mural and they want to go ahead with it, I discount that price from the total, which is mm -hmm. in the initial quote. Beautiful. I always state that. Because people will learn as they are going in their career that mm -hmm. many times you're going to meet people who are going to want to get, it's mm -hmm. not out of, it's not out of greed. Maybe sometimes it is, but it's just because the artistic field is so like intangible that most people just don't understand how it works. So it's our job mm -hmm. as artists to make it as clear and understandable as possible for people mm. to make it easy for them to work with us. Yes. We are the translators. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so we need to translate it into steps, money, practical, practical how is it yeah. going to one, two, three, what are the steps to get from like idea to execution? You know? Yes. It's like, if I go <laughs> to a lawyer, I know nothing about it. I would probably, he's going to be like number seven to and he's going to start no, I don't want that. You're yeah. the professional. You're going to do that. But I do want you to explain me how do I participate of this and how I can work with you in the best way possible. Exactly. Mm. And it's hard because it's not this. It can't be like, oh, this is plastic. It takes three days to melt. This is how much mm -hmm. plastic costs, whatever. There's also a creative part yes. in which is the intangible bit. Okay, let's talk about that. What, so you send your quote, very practical stuff, and they agree. Mural. What about this creative side you were saying? Well, that's included in all of the price. It just depends on like, and this is something I always talk about in my social media. Follow me for more. Yes, we're going to put the link down yeah. below. So um, creativity has a price. Mm -hmm. And the beautiful thing about art is that, yes, there are certain like market prices you can base off to price like a painting this size with this much Chat detail. GPT kind of market price or where do you get those market prices? Oh, it's just experience and just mm. talking to other artists and gallery owners and whatever. Okay, that's great. So I've come to understand and I'm really transparent about this and I always talk about it in social media mm -hmm. like this is how much this costs. Mm -hmm. And I always am transparent about my prices and how I, I price it. things and whatever. So like... This painting, for example, can cost X, yeah? Mm -hmm. And that's based off size, complexity, design, idea, like concept, yeah? Not everyone's going to think of this. So that has a price. Mm -hmm. And that based off and compared to other things that are similar artists with similar sizes, similar complexity, you can come up with a price based on that. But what's beautiful about mm -hmm. art is that a painting this size can cost a hundred times more than a painting this size. Mm -hmm. And the painting this size could be just a red dot mm -hmm. and it can still cost a hundred times more. And you know why? Why? Because it depends <laughs> on you. It depends on how much you believe in what you're doing. You know, yeah. you set the price. I could set this at $10,000 mm -hmm. or I can, it can be $1 and I can just give it away because I'm the artist. I set the rules, Yeah, you know, and that's what's beautiful about art. It just depends on how much you believe and what you're putting out there. Okay. And that's how you're going to So we're going to sell it for 10K. Uh, what would be the process to put it on the eyes of the 10K client? 
So first of all, you got to figure out what kind of people you want buying your art. And you got to... How do you take that decision for yourself, Esme? So for example, I know that probably like a bank investor who is like super conservative is not going to buy a painting of like two gays hugging in heaven. Yeah. <laughs> and is not going to hang it in his house. Yeah. No, so you got to... represent... It, it's not maybe part of his identity. Yes. Mm. So you just got to... Um, you got to read the room. First of all, Wait. so I always say that what you're looking for is violently looking for you. <laughs> yeah. So I sit down and I do this exercise sometimes and I'm like, okay, so there's these, um, I don't know, like I'm going to say there's a couple. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he maybe is like a creative director and she's like a fashion designer mm -hmm. or she does this and that. And they have this beautiful home and I envision, and I imagine like their house is amazing and they have all these like beautiful furniture and mm -hmm. like they have two kids and their kids go to the school and da da da. And like, they're like looking for a, a cool piece to hang in their like playroom in their house. Or like they really want to gift their friend who's also an artist, something really cool. And they just haven't found the right person yet. They're just really looking for something like mine. There's a lot of intention there. Yeah. Mm. So I just set intention and I create in my mind Mm -hmm. um visualization yeah I, I an idea of who this person is mm -hmm. and then I'm like where do they hang out mm -hmm. like where do they get their coffee what kind of parties they go to mm -hmm. and then I'm like where can I have either an art show an art installation who can I talk to who might know these people mm -hmm. and that's when I start doing like mind mapping yeah so who do I know mind. that might know mm -hmm. people like this how do I make? It's like you're creating the Google map to the destination. Exactly. Mm. So you start connecting the dots. Yeah. Wow. Where can I have an art show that maybe is in a neighborhood area where those kind of people would hang out yeah, at? People with a 10K that are also contemporary. Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. And also it has a lot to do with like, is this just for this audience? Like I am just now realizing that, mm -hmm. like, for example, I made a series of paintings recently that a lot of people were like, they looked at them and they were like, oh, they're really cool. But um, a lot of people had doubts about them. They were and not then, like super sparked. Yeah. I and I was like, oh my God, but this is fucking genius. Like I knew it was genius. I love and it. then this couple from this American couple mm -hmm. walked into the gallery where I had the paintings up and they were like, this is genius. I'm buying all of the paintings. All the paintings. And they took all the paintings. And I yeah, knew- they did. I, I, yeah. yeah, they did. Yeah. Yeah, they did. Of course and they I knew did. that was going to happen because I was like, when someone connects with this, they're going to see the genius in it. And they were American. And I was like, maybe my art needs to go other places. See? So now I'm like starting to do that. Mm. But you just need to do a little bit of mind mapping and mm -hmm. using your imagination. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Mm. A lot of data. I see. A lot of data. See, I, I love your data. Thanks for sharing. It. <laughs> Thanks for asking. <laughs> I am. My husband is a data science. I like saying I'm an emotional data scientist. But both. you both translate mm. data. We into... love data. We love data. That's good. <laughs> We're using these channels to keep sharing data and expanding yeah. this information. Thanks for sharing also the information in your platform. I love it. Yeah. I, I tell you, I've been sharing it with a lot of people. Yeah. Well, follow for more. I always share information about how um, the art industry works, how to mm -hmm. use your talent, how to find your style, how to price your work invisible things i have a video that's called yes. like invisible things like things that you need to charge for there aren't usually like obvious <laughs> like soon there needs to be a digital class oh. yeah it's, it's coming it's, it's coming, coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah that wouldn't be out of your one thing maybe of art yeah. but i hope there's something out there too it's coming and it's also unique i guess to every artist but we gotta grab these tools this is, this is why we're sharing them this is why i'm making this interview to you yeah. To learn a little bit about your emotional, spiritual, practical execution. Um, okay, so you have this beautiful, super focused, energy, creative flow, professional um, outcome, I was going to say. Um, you just had a kid not long ago. Yeah. Can we talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Because it's me. I did not want to get married. I did not want to have a baby. Or babies, because I do think that I'm, I'm a hypnotherapist too, and I see subconscious mind. And kids just want your fucking attention, dude. Yeah. They just want your time. They just want to be seen. And I thought, 
music is my baby. So mm -hmm. my songwriting, in your case, the, your painting is your baby. Yeah. How do we keep nourishing our art baby mm -hmm. when a baby comes? This is a really beautiful subject and I love to talk about this because um, I think I wasn't really prepared mm -hmm. um, when I got pregnant and and I had really no, like I thought it was going to be hard, but I didn't have a full understanding <laughs> of how much it was going to impact my life mm -hmm. and the death that you go through as women. Mm. So for me, it was like at first I cried for the first three months because I all I could think about mm -hmm. was how I was never going to have a studio ever again. Like I was never going to be able to dance with my eyes closed in my studio and just forget about life and just do my thing and let mm -hmm. go because I was always going to have this. And what's been so beautiful about this experience mm -hmm. is that, yes, you do die. You die yes. as a woman. The ingenue you die. dies. You're, yeah, mm -hmm. like your identity dies. But there's also this social construct and this idea that like, oh, you have to like pour your entire life into your baby. You can. But you know what's beautiful? That we as women mm -hmm. can exist in multiple timelines, in multiple places, mm -hmm. in multiple energies at the same time. We are fountains of life, yeah. quite literally. Seed of yeah. life. Yeah. <laughs> so we can give... Mm -hmm. We can give to multiple babies at the same time. And it just takes a little bit of organizing. That's the only thing that has changed in my life because I have gained so much from having a kid. I thought it was going to take. Tell me about these gains. Yeah. Girl. So I thought that having a baby was going to take for me. It was going to take time away from my art. It was going to take time away from my creativity. It was going to take time away from my attention with my life, with myself. Mm -hmm. And it has only given me. Like it gives and it gives and it gives and it keeps on giving. And like the effort that I, like I'm a really good mom and I can say that really confidently because it. I think that women need to start acknowledging what they do. Like I am, a, I am a good mom. I'm really present. I'm deeply in love with my baby. I feel like I'm really giving him a childhood that I'm, that I would have loved to have mm -hmm. that I feel like he's gonna, he, I can see he loves cause he's really happy. Um, But at the same time, I get so much more out of it mm -hmm. because he's just a fountain of love and just life. energy and life, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. And I've figured it took me almost two years, which mm -hmm. is he's going to turn two in March. It took me almost two years Mary's to baby. organize mm -hmm. the practical aspects. Like, do I get a nanny? Do I get an out of the home studio? Do mm -hmm. you know, how do I organize the practicals of life so I can give both my babies, my art and my baby, mm -hmm. enough time and attention. I have two babies. <clears throat> exactly. Mm -hmm. So now I've figured out a system and it doesn't happen as it was before where I would wake up at three in the morning inspired and just start painting. Okay. It doesn't happen like that anymore mm -hmm. because I need to prioritize my nourishing and my sleep and my time because I need mental space and I need emotional space mm -hmm. to hold space for him, yes. to hold space for me, to allow myself to feel so I can express myself and make art, you know? Mm -hmm. um, it just takes the reorganizing of your life, but there is a current of thought in society that you have a baby and you lose yourself and you lose yes, your life and it's that, just so negative. There is that thought. I'm yeah. going to be honest. I, it has touched my mind. <laughs> I mean, I was the same before mm -hmm. I was like, I do not want to have months babies. Those three months you were saying. Yeah. Like, no, like, before I was like, I never want to have kids because mm -hmm. like, I just don't want to lose myself and I don't want to lose my life. Like I, I love my life. It took me my entire life to find mm -hmm. myself and I don't want to lose myself. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what happens when you have a baby. But what comes out on the other side is like this better version of yourself like the pokemon when it's like evolving yeah. you evolve as a pokemon and you become this like better version of yourself mm. more you know? organized in this case yeah and I you do get to the point where you can do it all like it does that does come it just takes a little bit of organizing that's it <laughs> my limiting my limiting beliefs are resisting themselves yeah, like, <laughs> the alarm is going oh, off yeah, yeah. like are you sure about it yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, but it does happen. It does happen and you can you can absolutely get your life back and you can absolutely give as much 
to your art and your craft as you do to your kid. Oh, this is why I was too much. <laughs> yeah, you know, this is why, because I have like, we women mm -hmm. and us, which women have mm -hmm. an infinite source of energy and oh, love yeah. and magic. It's like, it just spills out. Mm -hmm. And we just have another container to put mm -hmm. all, all our love and attention and magic into. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's it, like, it's an expansive experience. It's not detrimental or it's not a jail as mm. society makes it look. Yes. It's not at all. It's so refreshing, like a bucket of like freaking cold water. Yeah. That you tell me this. Because I feel like, and I did this too, and mm -hmm. I, I really want to be honest about this yes, because please. It's really important who you surround yourself with when you're going to have a baby before, during your pregnancy and after, and when you're raising your kid. What are some notes to surround, like top tips of not surround these people for you, of course. Mm. And what are some top, top notch people you like for this context, art, baby world. Just surround yourself with people who are not only positive because positive can be a kind of yucky mm -hmm. sometimes like just one-sided yeah mm -hmm. just one-sided but just people who are looking for the best in everything you know like with motherhood I used to hang out a lot around a lot of like other moms who were just complaining all the time mm -hmm. like oh motherhood is so hard and I was doing that too Mm. I was like only looking at the things that were hard. Yeah, of course there are things that are challenging, challenging. and hard, mm -hmm. you know, it's not always easy, but I would, but I also do, same thing with birth. Like I was mm -hmm. terrified of giving birth because mm -hmm. everyone was like, Oh, you wait, you're, it's going to be so painful. Mm -hmm. And then one time I had a conversation with one girl who was like, girl, fear is mental. Like yes. you're going to have such a good birth and her it's entire speech, are you gonna yeah. be like, <laughs> her speech was just, So refreshing and I was like ah oh. and then I started saying like what if my birth is amazing like what if it doesn't hurt and I had the most beautiful quick be not painless but not that terrible like home birth mm. and I love it mm. same thing with parenting and being a mom like if you're surround yourself with other moms who are like being a mom is a fucking tits you're gonna learn from that and you're gonna start talking like that mm -hmm. and your whole identity and your mm -hmm. mentality and everything around it is gonna happen like that. Same thing with art. If you surround yourself with other artists who are like, art is so hard, it's so Ooh, hard to make yeah. money from art, you're gonna you're believe gonna see, that and yeah. act as if. You're gonna see the limitations, mm -hmm. you know? So you gotta surround yourself with artists who are constantly like, man, art is possible it's doable it's easy this is good here's an opening here's another door opening this is you know like, <laughs> keep going, keep going. Yeah, like, yeah 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 and being positive <laughs> like that doesn't mean not acknowledging the difficulties mm -hmm. it just means that you don't let the difficulties hold you back we embrace the challenges as part of our craft mm -hmm. as the weight that makes our muscle bigger exactly. and we are stronger for the next challenge because we already built that Muscle. That muscle, you don't mm. stop because it's heavy. You just know that it's gonna build. I'm like, oh fuck, this is heavy. Oh, it feels so good. And it you're, burns. And then your sword, <laughs> aka, you're crying, you're yeah. singing, and you're like, fuck yeah, I'm alive. Yeah, exactly. I have a body yeah. that feels. I'm alive. I'm exactly. alive. Yeah, yeah. That's my... So much information. Yeah. Okay, so it is possible for art and motherhood to motherhood. coexist. Yeah. Coexist. There is space for creativity. There's for, there's space for professionalism and success in your career. Ah, oh, for sure, for sure. Just mm -hmm. surround yourself with the right people. I think we are social creatures. That's what same thing when I was saying at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Like you're not alone in this world. You can absolutely work on yourself all that you want, but you got to make sure that you have a solid team around you. You know that your surroundings are supporting the best parts of you mm -hmm. that that you're not putting yourself in situations or with people or conversations or whatever mm -hmm. that are going to bring out the worst in you because we are humans we do have that that yeah. side yeah. that wants to complain that wants to you know yeah but what is what parts are being triggered exactly And imagine there is a like the best of you gets triggered yeah imagine, imagine. oh i love it man Thank you so much for your time. I want to give us like a little closing yeah. um, because there's infinite information here. Infinite. And our audience can go and check out your socials. 
Um, what is, I mean, we've had a lot of depth here, but if you had to give like one big advice for artists, not just painters, but artists, what is today a mantra that you like live for? The closer you get to who you really, really are inside, the better your craft will be. Mm. I love it. Thank you, Esme, so much for your Thank time, you. your space, for having me here. Um, please, can you tell our audience where can they find your Instagram and where can they ask for products and all of the art you have available well i do everything through instagram so you can find me at esme ferretti that's a double r double t um just anything shoot me a dm yeah. everything is there and you can watch all my um educational videos look at my stories i'm constantly talking about this and how to live off your art giving out tips and advice mm. and anything you can find it all on instagram amazing thank you so much Esme. we're gonna put that link below thank you so much thank you here. thank you this has been amazing yes uh, i love it thank you so much for watching this artist interview with esme ferretti today um if you have any big insights clicks please leave them on the comments below and we would love to hear from you and see you next on our next artist interview Thank you.